Good morning and welcome to University of New England. Um, it's it's a wonderful to see you all here, and I especially appreciate uh, my friend, my new friend, Senator King, Ingus King, and uh, we also have a number of other people that I'd like to just, I, I can't introduce everyone, and I look around the room and I see so many friends, so many people that I've gotten to know in my one year here in, in Maine already, and I'm just so grateful to all of you for showing up today. So we have, in particular, I'd like to recognize Kate Sim Simpson from Senator um, Susan Collins' office, Andrew Colvin, the representative from Shelley Pingree's office, uh, my friends Art and Fran Girard, who uh, were sp responsible for giving this building, actually, to UNE. Um, we have various UNE trustees here today, John Ching, uh, the chairman of our board, Dave Anderson, Vice Chairman Dan McCormick, David Barber, and Vice Chairman Cindy Taylor are here with us. We have advisory committee, uh, we have we put together an advisory council for UNE North, and Patrick Arnold, Ben Ford, Peter Handy, Chris Howard, John Nass are all here today. Thank you very much. We also have friends with us from Iceland and Sweden, who I will introduce um, in just a little bit, and they're with us remotely here today as well. So again, welcome everyone. So here, just a few miles from the waters that connect Maine to the rest of the world, we stand um, to inaugurate UNE North, the Institute for North Atlantic Studies at the University of New England, and I couldn't be more happy. With an eye towards the challenges and opportunities born of Maine's cultural, economic, and environmental ties to the rest of the North Atlantic, UNE North is really an invitation to collaborate and to innovate together. In this initiative, we plan to build relationships, to learn from friends, to develop solutions, local solutions that we can scale globally throughout the North Atlantic region. So UNI North promises to return tremendous returns to the people of Maine, the Maine economy, and the wide variety of our partners throughout the North Atlantic region. By engaging in educational, research, industry, and community partnerships from across the region, UNI North will help define our shared challenges and will leverage our shared resources to address them. It will connect, support, and train sustainably-minded leaders to shepherd, shepherd healthier economies, healthier communities, and ultimately, a healthier planet. For many reasons, this initiative is a logical step for the University of New England. It aligns with our commitment to innovation for a healthier planet and draws upon our broad research and interdisciplinary strengths and it capitalizes on our thriving global programs. Last fall, a group of my colleagues and I traveled to Reykjavik, Iceland as part of the Maine International Trade Commission's delegation to the Arctic Circle Assembly. And I know there's many of you here that were at that same Arctic Circle Assembly in Iceland. It was an amazing event. And while we were there, we came better acquainted with our Icelandic friends and partners and made many new friends from across the region. And it became clear to me at that time that the challenges that we face here in Maine are really many of the same challenges that these folks face in throughout the North Atlantic region, in the Nordic countries, in Scandinavia, and beyond. There are similar challenges, and what we need are solutions that we can all develop locally and then scale to address these global problems. Shortly thereafter, we began conceptualizing this initiative as a way to pool our strengths and to work across disciplinary boundaries to address them, to address the common economic, environmental, climatic, social, health, and political challenges. This spring, we took some major steps forward for this initiative by establishing a permanent headquarters for UNE North here at 1075 Forest Avenue and by naming Professor Barry Costa Pierce as the founding executive director for UNE North. So it's now my pleasure to introduce UNE's new provost and executive and senior vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Josh Hamilton. Josh joined us only a few weeks ago, but has already proven essential in many initiatives. And I can tell you this is one of the ones that he's most excited about. So Josh, please.
Thank you, James. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, thanks for your kind words and for the opportunity to join this incredible university and this very vibrant community. Uh, getting to know you, the faculty, the professional staff, the students, and all of our partners and stakeholders in the region has really been a delight, and I look forward to working with all of you as we move this and other initiatives forward. Uh, I'm very excited by the many academic uh, possibilities of this initiative um, and the things that it will create, particularly the interdisciplinary opportunities for our faculty, our staff, and particularly our students, and the stakeholders of the region. Uh, this initiative represents a truly interdisciplinary effort. Interdisciplinarity is going to be the hallmark of all great initiatives going forward. Uh, the challenges that society faces, as well as the opportunities, are truly interdisciplinary. If you think of the really difficult problems in society, climate change and other things like that, as well as the opportunities for economic development, it really does take a village of people. It takes scientists, engineers, business people, uh, social scientists, policy people, all working together to create uh, this vibrant solution. Uh, programs like this uh, don't just do their own initiatives, but they're really designed to connect the dots, to really put together these initiatives. And if you think about uh, the North Atlantic and this beautiful graphic over here of the region that um, we will help pull together, uh, literally and figuratively connecting those dots will be very exciting and I think provides enormous uh, economic opportunity as well as other opportunities in the region. Uh, to give you a greater sense of uh, UNE North's vision and mission, it's my pleasure now to introduce its founding director, uh, Dr. Co uh, Costa Pierce. Uh, for the last six years, Barry has served as director of our Marine Sciences Program and our Center for Excellence in Marine Sciences. Uh, he came to the faculty of UNE as a distinguished Henry L. and Grace Doherty Professor of Marine Sciences. And during his time overseeing the Marine Sciences Program here, He's greatly expanded their faculty, their resources, their research base, their educational programs, and the many partnerships that we now enjoy in the region. Barry is an extremely accomplished educator and world-recognized researcher in his field. Uh, prior to UNE, uh, Barry spent 30 years in science and leadership positions, including as a NOAA Sea Grant Program Director, for which he received the President's Award from the National Sea Grant Association. He also built a reputation as a leading expert in fisheries, aquaculture, and marine resource management. He has many other great accomplishments and has received numerous awards and accolades for his academic success, including being named as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. But of particular note today, he recently received a Fulbright scholarship which he used to travel to Iceland. And most recently, he was named as a Royal Swedish Academy of Agriculture and Forestry Fellow as the Wallenberg Professor at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. His experience during these and other recent collaborations across the North Atlantic were part of the impetus for him to conceive and launch this new initiative at UNE with partners throughout the North Atlantic. After many months of planning, he now steps into the position of founding executive director of UNE North, the UNE Institute for North Atlantic Studies. Uh, it is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Barry Costa Pierce. Well, thank you for those extremely kind comments, Josh. Thank you, Provost Hamilton, and thank you, President Herbert. If it wasn't for your vision, we wouldn't be here today, and it's a great day. Thank you so much from many of the people in the audience that I see around uh, this room today. Senator King, your leadership in 2015 was a, a big part of this. Thank you so much. Well, my experiences of leading organizations throughout the world, uh, in Asia, in Africa, and in the Americas, have demonstrated to me to the extent which international and cross-disciplinary collaborations are absolutely essential to designing local to global sustainable solution, and more importantly, to learn from others to tackle the many challenges that we're facing in this rapidly changing world. I've spent my last six years at this extraordinary university developing new programs, expanding facilities, hiring the next generation of diverse young leaders, and developing deep partnerships in a number of Nordic countries and especially in Iceland and in Sweden. And tak fjöder, my friends, and tak kram. I thank you, President Herbert and Prev Provost Hamilton, for your vision to bring UNE North to the world, and for your confidence in me for being its founding executive director. I couldn't be more thrilled with this opportunity to lead such an important initiative, and I'm deeply honored to be selected. 
My years at UNE and my many visits to the New North have made it clear to me how uniquely positioned UNE is to lead this type of initiative. Because we are a multifaceted university with an institution-wide commitment to global environmental and human health, sustainable development goals, and to the individuals, communities, and businesses making the world a better place every day. We already possess a deep reservoir of knowledge in fields essential to our engagement in the new north and in the Arctic. We also possess a strong network of relationships with the institutions represented here today that share our priorities. This is very much a local to global initiative. There's a widespread faculty enthusiasm at the University of New England's campuses for this institute, UNE's first institute across all of our colleges. Meanwhile, the list of external partners for UNE North has already grown to include the New England Ocean Cluster, Verrill Dana, Pierce Atwood, the Maine North Atlantic Development Office, the Planetary Health Alliance, Bristol Seafood, Sustain a Metrics, the Fulbright Program in Iceland, the University of Akureyri in Iceland, Holar University College in Iceland, the University of Nordland in Norway, and the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. By connecting the right people who are already working on a lot of the sustainable development challenges that we face, we can create a very powerful network that is a force for positive change across this region and the world. Our initial educational programs will be in the areas of ocean food systems, entrepreneurship and innovations in recycling economies, investigations of sustainable models of development important to indigenous and First Nation communities, successful rural North Atlantic and Arctic educational models, and rever emerging resource policies and governance of natural resources in this very rapidly warming region. These are intended to serve as models for additional health, nutrition, humanities, and social science efforts at UNE North. To give you a sense of the type of programs we'll be launching very soon, I'll tell you a little bit about our new professional science masters in ocean food systems, which will be held out of this building in close cooperation with the College of Arts and Sciences at, in the, on our Biddeford campus. This is a cooperative effort with the University of Akureyri and Holar University College in Iceland, and Sweden and Norway, who are developing, as we speak, a complementary twinned masters that will allow American and UNE students to do their thesis projects in any of these multiple nations. This 12-month degree program combines the strengths of all of these institutions to examine holistically ocean food value chains in fisheries and aquaculture and their strong interactions with business, economics, governments, policies, management, and civil societies. The program's goal is to train the next generation, the young people, of sustainability-minded leaders who will pioneer the sustainable development of North Atlantic farm-to-fork and port-to-plate initiatives. UNE North will also be a hub of scientific research using collaborative and translational research methods to maximize UNE's broad research expertise and expand partnerships further and our collaborative portfolio. UNE research centers are already doing on work on the cutting edges of their fields, applying our expertise in this new enterprise to shared North Atlantic and Arctic challenges will result in solutions that improve the lives of individuals and the health of communities across the region and the world. UNE's growth will be informed and guided by an advisory council made up of Maine's top leaders in North Atlantic and Arctic engagement. The Senior Advisory Council will grow over time to include representatives from across the region, welcoming indigenous and First Nations, allowing UNE North to grow strategically and to maximize its impact. It is my absolute distinct honor to lead this initiative. In the years to come, Maine's citizens, and especially Maine's young people, 
are going to benefit in so many ways from this, from the pathways UNE North will open to other communities, cultures, and economies. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Peter Handy, the president and CEO of Bristol Seafood. Peter is a long-term colleague, a member of our senior advisory council here at UNE North, and a very valued partner in our many projects in the past at the College of Arts and Sciences. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. You got me to wear a tie today. <laughs> Good work. Uh, my name's Peter Handy. Uh, I run the team at Bristol Seafood, and I'm from away. And when I came to Maine, the reason I did it is I thought that I'd be making a choice of values and nourishment, and I would do it despite all the challenges that exist to being in the state, because it was worth it to me. But I was completely wrong. It, in fact, the culture and the values here and what we've got in Maine and what's connected with the North is an advantage. And I didn't realize that until I got started. So with seafood, there are lots of natural connections. You have the aim skip vessels that come and can carry our freight all the way in, where we can process it on the fish pier. We have opportunities to buy equipment that's handmade in Iceland that's utilized on the fish pier with Maine people. And all of those things have ended up being huge advantages where we thought we'd have disadvantages. So in fact, we've got the cultural side, we've got the logistical side, and we have the cultural nourishment. What's so exciting about UNE North is that story's not unique to fish. That story ties into everything that we do. The cultural things we brought back from the North Atlantic have been really impactful for our business. And my hope is that the pragmatism that UNE brings to the market, we can find more of those connections between Maine and the North Atlantic to make a really meaningful difference in tons of ways. And what we bring to the table here is instead of having it be a view of, we've got all these problems and how do we solve them? This to me is such an authentic manifestation of who we are in Maine, what we value and what we're good at, and it plugs so naturally into what's happening in the North Atlantic I'm excited to see your institute do more to bring it forward. So thank you, Barry. Thank you so much, Peter. I really appreciate you being here and your partnership in this, in this initiative. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce an individual who's been extremely supportive of our mission here at UNE throughout the years. A gentleman who's visited our campuses frequently and whose tireless work on behalf of Maine people never ceases to inspire us. In 2015, he, held, he led the Maine delegation to the Arctic Circle Assembly, where he addressed the entire group of delegates at that assembly. He founded US, the U.S. Senate's Arctic Caucus with Senator Lisa Mikowski of Alaska, and he was instrumental in bringing the Arctic Circle to Maine in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator, Maine's own Senator, Angus King. Five percent. You wonder what I'm talking about. Five percent is the proportion of the world's population that lives in North America. A quick calculation, if you're in business, is 95% of the customers are somewhere else. That means we have to engage in the world. And that's the mission that is part of the mission of this wonderful new center. This is a terrific idea. It's coming at just the right time. Uh, I have to say my involvement with the Arctic is uh, in part accidental uh, and in part very conscious. Uh, my first visit to the Arctic was in that big white space uh, above Alaska, up where, near where it says North Pole, uh, 500 feet under the ice in a, a, a Virginia-class attack nuclear submarine. 
uh, a group of, uh, of us uh, went up uh, to Alaska, flew out over the uh, Arctic Ocean, uh, landed on an airstrip which was marked by black garbage bags. That was how you told where the airstrip was. Uh, the, uh, it was an unbelievable moment as we were out on the ice and all of a sudden up through the ice came the conning tower of the USS New Mexico. And we got on board, went down under the ice for about 24 hours, spent the night. The most moving part of the, of the, of the, uh, of the trip was under the ice, uh, the uh, chief of naval operations re-enlisted about eight sailors who chose that moment to take the oath to serve their country for another tour of duty. Uh, I came back from that trip inspired about the potential of the Arctic and uh, spoke to my colleague Lisa Mikowski of Alaska. Some of you know this story. We were walking into the Senate chamber and I said, Lisa, I want to be the Arctic senator. And she said, no, Angus, you can be the assistant Arctic senator. <laughs> And we decided on the spot to form the Arctic Caucus, which we now have a, a larger group of, of senators, not only from Alaska and Maine, but from uh, all, over the, all over the country. By the way, if you look at this map, I love the way it's designed. Maine is the Miami Beach of the true north. <laughs> you, we're right down. Uh, so uh, for those of you in uh, Scandinavia, take note of that uh, fact. Uh, but uh, the, and then following up on that and working with Lisa, we visited uh, Alaska, uh, Baffin Island in, in the Arctic, uh, Greenland, uh, Iceland. Uh, I've been over to Norway. I used to do business in Norway uh, and of course uh, Sweden. Uh, an incredibly closely connected region of the world to Maine. And Aimskip, Aimskip has made it even closer. And we can now uh, receive goods and ship goods uh, throughout the high north, which is an incredible opportunity to open our state to that 95% of the world that is uh, somewhere else. Uh, the other piece that I found very moving uh, is that in Iceland, I visited the site of the Althing, uh, which is the world's first uh, representative parliament. The year was 930. In 932, the filibuster was invented. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I can allege that, but I suspect they had an equivalent in Iceland. Um, but it's, it's very moving to be at the spot where essentially representative uh, democracy was literally invented on this planet. Uh, going And of course, in, in, uh, in the sense that we know it as a parliamentary democracy, of course, we know about Athens, but uh, it's a very moving uh, place to, to be. Uh, I just want to compliment UNE for bringing this together. Uh, ideas sort of percolate around and, and, and people think and talk and chat, and then it takes a catalyst. It takes somebody with the vision to pull it, or some group of people with a vision to uh, pull it together in, a, in a, a center like this, which I think will really make a, a, a significant difference in Maine's relationship uh, to the world and to the world's relationship to Maine. And that's what's so special about this uh, uh, kickoff here today. So I look around the room and I see so many friends from uh, different uh, parts of, of uh, the experience working with international trade here in Maine. And I just believe that this is uh, an enormous uh, opportunity for us and an enormous benefit. And to our friends uh, in Scandinavia, I can only say Tusen Tak. Uh, that's the extent of my Norwegian. Uh, uh, and uh, we, but we are very thankful and appreciative of their involvement because this will only work if it's a true uh, collaboration. So congratulations to UNE. Congratulations to uh, all of the people that helped uh, to make this possible. And I look forward to many visits back and uh, hopefully many visits uh, uh, to the region. So thank you, congratulations, and uh, I guess to you, President Herbert, to talk. Thank you so much, Senator King. Really, really appreciate you being here and for sharing your thoughts with us. 
We're very lucky to have um, such a friend as you in Washington and here in Maine, and I really appreciate your support of this initiative. Um, at, this, at this time, I'd like to uh, acknowledge a few of the guests that are, who are joining us remotely today from abroad. We're very grateful to have the partnership of Dr. Bjarni Christopher, head of the Department of Aquaculture and Fish Biology at Hular University College in Iceland, and his Hular colleague, uh, Dr. Helga Thorensen, and Dr. Eljofer Guthmansson, rector of the University of Akieri in Iceland. We're also grateful for the partnership of Dr. Kristen Sutan Sundell, director of SWIMARC, a program that delivers a Nordic master's degree in the sustainable production of marine bioresources at the University of Gothenburg, Sweden. So thank you all very much for your contributions to this initiative and for your partnership. Um, and uh, welcome. So now at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions if uh, anybody has any questions about the initiative. Or did we just uh, summarize everything so well that uh, it left you all speechless? Get that nice picture of Rangeley Lake in Maine. Oh, Rangeley. <laughs> <laughs> Rangeley Lake in Maine. Yes, this is <laughs> this is a lake in Maine after the winter that we had, right? That that uh, there, there, it was a little chilly, so um, uh, it's thawing. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you all very much, and please um, feel free to stay and mingle and network. And we have some refreshments. And I appreciate everyone coming out today. Thank you. Thank you.